part of the panel and especially honored that my mom gets to be here with me. Literally the festival who gave me life <laughs> and now we get to share all of this with you. So thank you for coming along. business called the Neat Freak Co. We're based in Sacramento, but we also have a team in the Central Valley and we go into people's homes and create magic. We make, we do pantries, kitchens, closet, closet design, garages, anything that can be organized, we will do it. And we come in, we bring all the product needed, the A to Z project, get it done and leave with you with a beautiful finished space. I'm going to have each of the ladies here introduce themselves and I want to do something and we're going to tie it in to the end. When you are on a road somewhere and you're using a GPS or a map, what are the two things you need? Address. Destination. Starting point. Guess. So I want these ladies, <laughs> including myself, to share a starting point. I want you to keep that in mind as we continue to talk, as we continue to build community, as we continue to share, because then we're going to come back to it at the end. So without further ado, ladies, if you could spend a minute each sharing your name, your area of expertise, and the first entrepreneurial pursuit that you had. I want you to say what it was, how old you were, and just a quick, why did you do it? Like, I had to, or like, I always loved crocheting, whatever it is, I want you to say. Okay, so uh, hi everyone. <laughs> so, so excited and blessed to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm a local artist and I am the founder of Healing Hustlers. Yeah! So excited. And we also have a podcast. So, we're a community of women who come together. I like to host wellness events, um, a safe space for women. I was introduced to natural wellness on my personal journey. Uh, I was a workaholic entrepreneur. I always had that drive and burnout is a thing and that's what happened to me. <laughs> I actually suppressed my past experiences by working hard and that was expressed through my hair loss. So. I had alopecia and half of my head was completely bald and that was, I feel like, God's way of telling me, listen girl, I know that you've been putting this off, but it's time to deal with this. So about 2020 is when I dug deep, I found amazing natural products, um, which is also a part of my entrepreneurial journey. I, I don't sell the products because of the hype, I hype the products because they're that good, like, it's, it's a blessing. Um, and my first entrepreneurial experience was actually when, I was just telling the story because we're right next to the cathedral. Um, my first time planning an event was my quinceanera. So I was just 15 <laughs> years old when my parents and I went to a family friend's celebration and everybody was drinking and having so much fun and we expressed that I wasn't going to have my quinceanera. I wasn't, it wasn't something that was on our radar and the family friends were like, why are you not having a quinceanera? 
So my parents at the time were like, if you want to have one, you have to do the work. And I did. Within three months, I planned the entire quinceanera, and that was my first time having to call and plan and hit the, the churches, the everything. And um, I think that that was the first time that I experienced a craft that I didn't know. I had um, a love for art, but that was a whole new art experience. And then also connecting and building relationships. All of my padrinos, now I, I bring it to my space now with the podcast. We have a podcast called Healing Hustlers. So we open a space for entrepreneurs and local artists to share their journeys. I feel like through me sharing mine, it opened a space for others to share theirs. And yeah, we just have a, a welcome space and and here we are. <laughs> Yay! Hi everyone, I am Shadi. Um, where do I begin? <laughs> uh, my on first entrepreneurship um, was, I would say, started in 2000, 2010. Um, I was a new mom and I did, I fell in love with my daughter and I didn't want to do anything outside of being her mom. So I created jobs. She's going to make me cry because she's here. Uh -huh. <laughs> I created jobs around her schedule. And um, I lost myself because I was a high risk pregnancy and so I gained a lot of weight. I was tipping the scale at 206 pounds after I gave birth to her. And I wanted to her to be proud of me one day and not be embarrassed or, and I was sick and, and so I decided to start working out. And I've always been an athlete, but I just, I guess I just lost myself in and, and a marriage where I didn't feel like me and there's layers to that. <laughs> And um, I got into bodybuilding and my life changed. I saw myself in the mirror different. I saw myself strong and I started getting affirmations from women. And there's something very powerful when a woman looks at you and tells you you're beautiful mm -hmm. and you're not getting it in relationships and you don't need it in a relationship, but it was just, I needed that and I just became addicted and having that one, that piece of control that I had nothing else in control of, like my relationships or what my health was like. And, um, but I was in control of how I felt and how I looked. And I started winning bodybuilding shows and winning lucrative contracts and then magazine covers. It just changed my life because I was able to still be a mom. I have built an amazing community of women who have followed me through my weight loss, through my all my adversities, uh, through relationships, through business, through all of it. And it's been a, such a huge blessing. So I was forced into entrepreneurship by choice. I was like, I'm just going to make this happen. So. Sometimes you have to make that decision of wherever you're at in your life. If you're not feeling complete, you're gonna have to wake up and get out of your comfort zone and think about that one person, even if it's not yourself. And she was my why. So. Hmm. Yay! <laughs> um, my name is Camille Janae. I am so honored uh, to be here with you all. So I just wanna start with that. Um, I appreciate the energy you all have brought to the room. My first entrepreneur pursuit, I was 12 or 13 years old, and I've always been uh, an eager student with my Lisa Frank stationery. Hey. Pencil box. Um, Lisa Frank. And so I was people wanted to borrow pencils from, but I wasn't getting my pencils back. So I started selling pencils for 10 cents. around how to cut and 
style curly hair, how to care for locks. I am an artist, spoken word, and an event yes, curator. Are. Yes! I know the thought of someone loving you isn't foreign, but I want to be the love poem that embraces your soul until you can say my love feels like home. The quickest way to learn a language is through immersion. I imagine if you immersed your spirit into mine, we'd realize love is our native tongue. I thought I had a weakness for the starving artist types, good looking poets who had a way with words, but your heart is more confident than they ever were in their words, which is powerful. There's a fire in your eyes that ignites a light in mine every time you speak passionately beautiful. You are poetry personified, packaged as gorgeous royalty in disguise as a man just trying to make it. I'll stop there. <laughs> Uh, my name is Tiana Burse. Uh, yeah, my first entrepreneurial endeavor, believe it or not, was in a, I, we talked about this earlier, in a business model that had to do with network marketing. I was in that because I had just filed in bankruptcy. I was a college dropout. I remember, this is the funny part, I remember going in the closet of my parents' master bedroom and getting on my knees and praying to God that if you led me to a mentor, mm. this is the funny part, I swear to God, I'm sorry Lord, that I would take the opportunity. Some of you guys got that in the room, it's pretty funny. Uh, and for those who didn't, we'll get it later. Uh, and, uh, and that led me to understanding the power of being an entrepreneur. Yes. And that led me to having a successful knowledge and career. I would then move on from that business model. And um, that would lead me now into being a personal brand with Instagram and and the <laughs> meta. Uh, I, have a, I have a podcast that's solo called Bar Talk and Coffee. I have a few companies that I have ownership in, 50% uh, down to 20%, and uh, that has led me to being featured in Forbes and Entrepreneur Magazine. And on that note, with the podcast. I want to give a very special shout out to a local artist, Lynn Liana Rodriguez. supporters before the nonprofit when I was still doing the work and she is the beautiful artist behind this portrait that you see here this does not come with the building <laughs> Liliana is donating it to Elevated Health and Community and so over the month of June we will be holding a separate raffle with tickets for it there's a QR code over there there's information about Elevated you can scan and buy your tickets we're selling tickets for $50 each, and each ticket is an entry into the raffle, and we'll announce the winner at the end of June, early July. Um, so we want to thank her for giving of her gifts in a way that supports our mission and also empowers us to do more with you all and with the communities we serve. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. So this question is going to go to Tiana and Camille. As entrepreneurs, we are constantly challenged with how to set ourselves apart. You know, we talk about what's your niche, what makes you special, but just setting yourselves apart. And I want you to give, what's one tip you would give to the audience today on how to continue to set themselves apart while still maintaining an authentic brand. And by authentic brand, I want you guys to think of yourselves as the brand. So even if you're not an entrepreneur and you're a working professional and you just do what you need to get done, I want you to think about what you do and how you do it yourself as a brand. So how might we go ahead and pursue and keep that authenticity? Yeah. Um, I think the way you set yourself apart is by being authentic. You know what I mean? Because we're all unique individuals, so I think people get caught up in overthinking how to set themselves apart because they're playing the comparison game. But if you're being true to yourself, you can't really be compared to anyone. So I think leaning into what makes you unique, and if you're not aware of that, listen to what people are already telling you. People are speaking to what stands out about the way that you do what you do, what you create, how you create it. 
Um, and so that's already telling you what sets you apart. And a lot of times those things don't stand out to you maybe because it comes to you so easily. Um, so I think just keeping your ear to the ground and connected to those that are showing you where your light shines. That was good. society says it should be, creates an imposter syndrome from within that happens over time. And it gets worse because we're hiding because of social media. And so what we have to understand and identify is that you are the only you that's ever been gifted and worn. And so if you can identify and recognize that and remove the shackles for where you're giving someone more attention to what they do compared to what you do, then you will validate yourself on the inside, which validates your business on the outside. And that's been what I've done my entire career. You know, I drink tequila every day. So I made a point to make a podcast called Bar Talk and Fucking Coffee. <laughs> so when you can identify your God-given talents and strengths and double down on that and talk to yourself in the mirror and tell yourself how great you are every single day, you will not worry about what other people are doing. You will only worry about what you have going on with your life and what you have going on with your business. hearing that because depending on how you define authenticity, that's going to kind of guide what things you feel like you're willing to compromise on versus those things that you're going to have boundaries and keep steadfast. And I just know from experience when I started my entrepreneurial journey that's led for me here today, I didn't plan to be an entrepreneur. I thought I was going to retire from a government job, nice fat cushy benefits, and that was going to be the end. And so I didn't have a plan B. My motivation was, I have a house and a husband and a daughter I have to take care of. How am I going to contribute financially to the welfare of our household? And so part of what started to happen that I learned is your go-getter, right? The hustle culture starts to take over because you want to get exposure, you want to grow your market, you want people to know who you are. And we don't realize that sometimes that can start to derail us. And so... Chani and Christiana, I want you to speak to this. What are some of the ways that being more discerning and choosing to do less mm. instead of more can bring value and growth to your business pursuits? Yes. The magic word, discernment. Okay. Um, I feel like my whole platform has been based on that because I was not planning to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to be a mom, stay-at-home mom specifically. <laughs> and I was pushed out of my comfort zone because I feel like it was a gift, honestly, from God, because she would not see me at my fullest potential and know how powerful she can be. And you have to kind of be in a place where you're like on a ledge, on the verge. And for me, the discernment when I know I'm overextending myself and I feel like I'm about to burn out, besides my health will let me know. It's mostly my mental health. And I start feeling like I can't be present for people because of what I do is I'm in the wellness industry. And I constantly want to pour into women to learn they're beautiful from the inside out, not just physically. And I know I have to continue to remind myself that, but I also have to speak that out loud, whether it's on social media, to my clients, and more importantly, creating boundaries. And I've said this in other events that uh, if you don't create boundaries, you will have burnout. And I have had that happen very, very like, often, more than I would like to say. So as much as we want to chase paper, um, the rug will be pulled underneath you faster. And if you're not present for your clients, you're not gonna be in your full potential. So you have to create those boundaries. And you know, it's, it's one of those where you have to audit yourself because sometimes we think like, we have a schedule on our to-do list and we think 
we can literally schedule stuff every hour, and that's not healthy. It really isn't. And I know we have all the time, we're like, oh, I'll sleep when I die, you know? And you can't do that, because you're gonna die faster than you think. So everybody's laughing, because you know you said that out loud before. <laughs> I said it this, this morning. This is uh, entrepreneurship events. <laughs> so um, I guess I audit my family. My family comes first, hands down. Obviously, I've spoken of my daughter, and I've revolved my schedule around her, and that's my boundary. My family, my friends, my work, they know, nope, I gotta drive my daughter here, nope, I have a family event. And it's not just your media, you have to think about your partner and then think about the long-term vision of where you want to be. Because at the end of the day, you don't die with money in your coffin. I know we want to have the lifestyle, but at the end of the day, like how you're treating your family and how they're going to remember you, besides your business and all that so on, um, those are the people who are going to take care of you if you're not in a elderly home. So think about that. And then you honestly have to reevaluate your mental health, and that's something that we need to talk about more. Um, mental health is a huge thing, and I never experienced it, I think because I've always been on the run as a single mom at the time, that I experienced it last year. For the first time ever, I thought that I could work in a corporate job, and that, that, that like destroyed me. I was like, this is not for me, I'm gonna go back. And when you think you're an entrepreneur, you think you have freedom. <laughs> There's no freedom. <laughs> There's no days off. It's worth it, though. It's worth it. It is worth it, 100%. But um, I honestly prefer that, knowing that I'm in control again. So um, it's just creating those boundaries, for sure. To That's what's going to give you the discernment to know, OK, this feels good. So. I feel like us pouring into ourselves is key. Um, I always use the analogy, you can't pull from an empty well because then you're serving up mud. So to be able to fill up that well and you can give everybody that pure, clean water, that good energy, that's really where it counts. Um, especially with, I still have the hustler mentality and everything that I do, I want to be the best at whatever I can, right? God has given us these gifts and they're meant to be shared. So um, in order to keep the flow, I feel like it's important to look for those wellness windows where we can check in with ourselves. Um, shout out to my healing hustlers, that's why we do Wellness Wednesdays in the middle of the week so that we can pour back into ourselves through yoga, meditation, we do um, sound healing, and then we also check in with each other on Mondays and Thursdays via Zoom where we ask us ourselves the five questions. I actually counted as six now, but um, just checking in with yourself. Did I drink enough water? Did I get enough rest? Um, am I eating nutritionally? Am I getting movement and changing my breath? Because breath is life, so you're pouring that into yourself as well. Um, am I organized and connected with God, the universe, your creator? Because that's being in tune with like Tiana was mentioning, our, our worth and knowing who we are and connecting and being the authentic selves that we can share with the rest of the world. You only get that by tuning in with you. And you kind of have to block out the outside energy in order to really connect. And then you can show up as your best self. And that's the most beautiful thing because then you get to share those gifts with the world. Yay! <laughs> in here have flown on an airplane. In the event that the cabin loses pressure, what are you directed to do? Pray. Stay calm. Stay calm. And mask. Right? Yes. Whose mask goes on first? Yourself. I, I want you to say that again. Whose mask goes on first? Mine. Do we all do that? So I want you to take this as that wake-up call, that permission that you shouldn't want to take care of yourselves just to be able to take care of the other people you love. You should want to take care of yourself for you. You only have one life, and tomorrow is promised to no one. I have friends who are at my wedding who didn't live to be my age today. 
And I'm sure that wasn't what they thought their plan, their life, their path would be, nor the family members that were with them. So I want you guys to in, like internalize that. Yes, we want to support and do all the things we need to do and want to do, but you should want to care for you first and foremost. Your life, your journey is what's priority. I mean, the stewardess and the flight attendants all tell us that, right? Exactly. So as we're taking care of self, handling multiple responsibilities of life and family and running a business, Sometimes we get caught up thinking we have to do it by ourselves. Sometimes we feel, and especially if you are a solopreneur, if you are an army of one, you think that your success hinges on what you do and what you do alone. And so what I would like to hear, and I think the audience can appreciate, is how do we leverage resources? Resources can be people, they can be a mindset or personal healing practices. It could be paid services. It could be software or apps. I just kind of want to hear your perspective on how do we manage and navigate the space, keeping that authenticity, but still bringing in what we need. So, Tiana, I'm going to ask you first. I want you to speak to that because that's something, and I have no secrets. Tiana is helping me with that right now. <laughs> I've been doing everything by myself for so long that I realize I can't continue this way. I'm stagnating my own growth by not allowing in the opportunity. So I want you to speak a little bit to that. And then um, also, Christiana, I'd love to hear your input on that one as well. Cool. Okay, I know, I heard that too. Uh, you said something that was really important, which is being resourceful. And unfortunately, I'm going to say this, and it's going to sound super blunt, but most of us are not resourceful. And so what tends to happen is that when you're not resourceful, is you blame outside circumstances for your internal issue. And internal is whether it's the inside or the outside. And you can't play the blame game because if you're pointing, there's how many pointing back at you. What I learned early on in my career is this very important key point. It might not be for everybody, but it's for somebody in this room. Identify where you are strong and identify where you are weak. You could have the best idea, but with the wrong execution and the lack of the right people, nothing will happen. And so early on in my career, I partnered with someone who was strong or I was weak. And that took a hell of a mental checkup from the neck up. And most of us don't do that either. Because when you do that, you learn that what you have going on is on you. And so that was lesson number one was partner with someone who's strong or weak. And I did that. The second part to this is don't be afraid to invest in yourself. Now, many of you in this room have already done that. All of you have done that. You've invested in your time, your money, and your resources to get here. But you have to have that mentality leaving this room. And I'm going to say this, and it might come off as something that is bad, but I'll let you know. I mean, Tiff and I talk about this all the time. If you are a baller on a budget, and you are short with your money. Because it says in the Bible, whether you believe it or not, what you have in your hand does not meet your need, convert it to your seed. You have to invest in the elevation of an idea or a business. And if that takes you, hiring an executive assistant that doesn't live in the United States, that costs you $12 an hour to help you elevate your life, you have to do it. And from there, give yourself permission to hire another and another. I have 13 people under one company that I've never met in person because they're all in the Philippines. But that those people helped me to make $50,000 a month in one business. Do not be afraid to go outside of where we're at to get a job done. Taking notes over here. <laughs> um, yeah, that was, I love that. In my first experience, um, I feel like I'm very new to this still. Uh, it was just before COVID hit. So I also do custom jackets. 
that's where my art has uh, expanded to. And it started off with me giving gifts to my friends. That's really where any of my business started. Um, and then it evolves into something more. So that's why I'm like, oh, okay, I'm falling into this. So now let me take notes so that I can learn. But I, I think that the best thing is the community because the jacket thing only started because I had my own girls who proudly let people know where they got that jacket. And um, I was blessed right before the world shut down to be on Good Day Sacramento with my jackets and did a giveaway. So that took me through um, the shutdown and that was a blessing. And then to grow a community of women who really support one another. I, I don't know, I, I mentioned this at the mixer last night that this the beginning of this week my Instagram page went down, but we built such a beautiful community that even when I was down, my girls were lifting me up and sharing my stuff. Yeah. So I feel like having the right people around you can be a blessing and a resource. I love, um, how many people have read or heard of the book Worthy by Jamie Kern Lima? Yeah. Oh, it is so good. We're doing a book club on Tuesdays if you guys want to join us, feel free. Um, and one particular chapter, she shares, she shares the story of in the wild how female elephants, when a sister elephant is pregnant or hurt, the rest of the female elephants will, will circle around her and stomp their feet so that any predators will not be able to smell and they know that if you're trying to get to one of our girls, you gotta get through us. And when that baby's born, they trumpet and celebrate. And oh, every time that I, I read over and over again, and I'm blessed to say that my healing hustlers have become that for me, and we're that for one another. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I feel like is a beautiful blessing of a resource that we can continue. And that's something that we can all share with each other. Everybody here in this room, like she said, you've invested in yourselves by showing up today. So give yourselves a round of applause for that. Yay! Both of those statements that you two ladies said really resonated with me. The investing in self, because how many of us as entrepreneurs or even just as business people have said, ooh, yeah, I can't afford to do that. <coughs> you can. You're choosing to spend your money somewhere else. <laughs> Amen. Real talk. You can. Oh, I don't have time for that. You do. You've chosen to spend your time doing something else. Right? So we've got to start investing in self and stop making the excuses of why we don't do this, why we don't do that. All choices are deposits on your desired outcomes. Yes. Mm. One more what time. Are you paying for? Did you hear what the most valuable resource is? Community. We all identify with different communities. We all serve and show up and live in different communities. So Chani and Camille, how can we cultivate community in a way that just doesn't provide brand loyalty for the long haul, but also that feeds us, that fuels us. How do we go about that? What are a couple of strategies you ladies would recommend to invest in community? Um, that's a beautiful question, uh, because I think we, we throw the word community out a lot, and as adults, it can be hard to like make friends or build community or put yourself out there. Um, I think one, seeking community from a place of vulnerability, knowing that at the core we're all seeking connection, versus trying to build community from a place of what can you get out of it, um, because I think that's where the authenticity is lost and things can be very like superficial. So just from a place of who feels most aligned to me, who is like-minded or shares similar values, 
Um, approaching it from that standpoint and letting things blossom organically as a result, I think, is a, a great way to approach that. So, yeah. so good. So good. As a mom, <laughs> I didn't have a lot of time, and I know a lot of you may be working a lot. I don't know what space you are in. Um, if you're an introvert or if events or gatherings give you anxiety, um, whatever it is, for me, creating a community um, has to do with creating a space where wherever you're at in your life. So for me, it was on social media. Um, I built a community and a following through me just being authentic to my journey. And a lot of it did not look pretty. Sorry. Um, and that's the hardest part is putting yourself out there. So when I, I actually do network marketing where I sell beauty and wellness products and I have the biggest number one problem with a lot of women who join my business or who want to do the entrepreneurship or building following on social media is like showing yourself on social media and they just want to put graphics up there and they're like open for business and I'm like it doesn't work that way people want to connect and do business with people they like mm -hmm. so if you're not showing up and giving up a little bit of your personal side it's hard for them to want to work with you because you're just another business card they can scroll and find someone else or people are getting approached all the time and I think if you are in the entrepreneur space, you have to show up. You have to show up your face physically and you have to use your voice. So start off with putting a camera on your phone and self timer and maybe doing a morning routine. When you start revealing your authentic self and humanizing yourself, like listen to that. Listen to that. Humanizing yourself meaning what is, who makes you you? You guys know, like, I'm a mom. I also have made it very clear that I love dogs. And I get people sending me social media like me, some dogs all day, and I thought it's the best compliment. Because for me, I have exposed my personality so much, and it's not just fitness stuff or pretty stuff. Like, it's funny memes of dogs <laughs> or pictures of their dogs. <laughs> So, but any dog lovers, they want to connect with me about their dogs, and that there's that there's that connection. So, you, you guys can't just make it about your business. Unfortunately, people want to do again business with who they like, and you have to find something that makes you stand out. Like she said, um, don't make it superficial. Don't make it about how much money you make and how we connect and over in the same business. It doesn't matter. You have to put yourself on a on a what. What do we have like in common? Whether it's where we grew up, what we like to eat, what crime shows we like to watch, whatever it may be, you gotta find and expose that, even if you don't wanna talk about problems. Um, because I know a lot of people are like, I don't wanna be a Debbie Downer on social media, and that was me. But the more authentic you are and sharing your story, that's where people are like connected, and they're like, okay, I, she's not just, a fitness model like she's actually gone through some stuff and that's what makes myself relatable and so when I'm sharing and it's hard I don't talk about it but I will write stuff on my captions um, and it's very relatable to a lot of women um, I share about like my relationship I share what I eat I share my love for food and it's, it's extensive to outside of what I do for work and then when you talk about work, then it becomes, they listen, because they already like you. They're opening, obviously they're following you. So again, for me, find what, what you think you feel comfortable sharing with, even if it's, you know, I don't know, going for a walk. Maybe you'll find someone who wants to do a walking, um, if there's hot girl walks. That, you know, <laughs> my friend Jen just started. And um, it's actually, I think it's hot girl, hot girl, I can't remember the name. Hot girl walks, yeah. So all we do is walk on Wednesdays, and I'm actually gonna be start doing the walks in Placer County. And if you are just like, just wanna go out there and you're like, I don't wanna work and do your workouts, but I'll walk with you, <laughs> start there. 
you know? That's and then <laughs> document it. And then someone who's following you will be like, oh, she actually does something else than trying to sell me something. Yeah. You know, you have to make yourself relatable because people don't want to connect with someone who just wants them to spend money. You gotta like make yourself like relatable and also that's where people feel like they're aligned if they wanna be friends with you or they wanna do business with you. No, I, I think you're spot on with that and a word that really resonated with me around community was work. Building community is work. But I want you to differentiate between something that is work or challenging versus something that is burdensome. Mm -hmm. Because often when we don't feel connected, when we don't feel like we found our tribe or our vibe or our community, it's the person who feels without, that jumps through the hoops of belonging, who jumps through the hoops of performance to try to fit in. Mm -hmm. And can we normalize? You shouldn't want to fit in everywhere. Mm -hmm. You don't fit in everywhere and that is fine okay yes. let me say that again you will not and do not belong in every place and every space so don't force it okay? so as we continue to think about spaces and places and community and this one I know can be cultural, as a woman of color, the idea of giving up. Some of us were raised in families or households where don't quit, the last thing you do is quit. And I speak from experience of having stayed in a job too long. I tried to turn the other cheek, I took the high road, I did everything possible because I didn't want to give the space the opportunity to say that I didn't show up to par, that I didn't do my part to be. And what I really had to reconcile with myself is that that space was too small for me. And I had to own that and I had to acknowledge that I put myself through extra burden to try to stay in a space because I thought I should. So I open this to all of our panelists as the last question before we'll invite just a couple of questions from the audience. Keeping that in mind, how do we know when it's time to do more, to do less, or to just pivot and do differently? What are some of the situations that maybe you've experienced and you've realized, I thought it was supposed to be pedal to the metal and I realized, no, I'm supposed to fall back and be still. Or quite honestly, you just realize, no, this ain't the thing. Hmm. Like, I, I laughed with Bree and I, when we first met, we were not doing either of the jobs that we first met in. And let's normalize exploration. Yes. So ladies, how, how do we know? What are some of the distinguishing factors that you've had in your experience on when to fall back, push forward, or pivot? I think I'm just coming from a place of like gut feelings. So really, really connecting with you and like I said, my connection with God and prayer and letting him lead the way for me has been key. And there's there's a knowing when you're in a space, your body reacts a certain way. When you feel the most comfortable, I think that that's when you can feel what you're called for and what you're made for, what your purpose is. Now, I wouldn't confuse that with feelings of uncomfortability because you do also want, if it's something that you enjoy, you're gonna have to challenge yourself a bit. You're gonna have to stretch that comfort zone. So that's actually what I like to say. I don't say get out of your comfort zone, but expand it a bit more because now you're covering more you know, surface for you to be able to do what you're meant to do. Um, and then I really do feel like it's also important to have the right people around you who can be a good reflection and put up that mirror and remind you like, you know who you are, you know, and, and hype you up when you're feeling down. But um, I think that that's something that I've really embraced recently where sometimes I do try something to give it a go and if it doesn't feel right, then it's not for me. Um, 
I would say, here's the thing. You have to really like, I have that mindset of not quitting and I feel like my success has come from my resilience. It's, it has never be, been about me being better or because of the competitive world I was in. I would say it has to do with my resilience of not giving up. But what happens with that is that you have to decide, okay, where, like she said, you have to realize, when do I give up? Or when do I step back and reevaluate if this is a continued go? And um, there's two steps to that for me. For me, uh, if I am enjoying a business that I want, for if, let's say the wellness industry, um, I have to reevaluate if it's going up or down, and when it's not going up, or if it's still going stagnant. Stagnant's still good, that doesn't mean that it's bad. It just means like, how can I reevaluate, meaning like, maybe investing in my expertise, um, finding a community to collaborate, to do different like ideas, and you know, ping pong with someone, um, and really figuring out like auditing like where I'm at, if this is like, where I need to stay um, as far as like my business and creating something new with like clients or off a new offer, right? And then when I feel like, okay, I don't want to do that, then for me, it's, I, I step back and I have to realize, okay, my mental health, is, that's, that's number one because I, again, I can't pour into others without my mental health. Um, that's where I start like thinking about your, what you're, where you're at is your reputation. So if you're not creating um, good relationships, two things are gonna happen. Your reputation's not gonna go well and you're not gonna get referrals. So your relationships are everything. How you're showing up for others. So if you feel like you're tapping out, that means you have to audit where, where do you feel like the numbers are going down. And the numbers don't mean like how much money you're getting all the time. It means like what's being affected. To me, if family is taking away from me more and more, it's not worth it to me. It doesn't matter how much money I'm getting. Money's always gonna be there. What type of freedom do I want? And so that's where I see the numbers at. It's like, is my, am I investing enough time in my family where I wanna be? And then if not, like I've created an offer where it's like, okay, what's gonna be um, something of high value of less cost? For someone else, so it's not taking away from my freedom with my family. And then, you know, group classes, like virtual online classes, like you have to get creative and then again tap back into that resourceful, like reach out to your community and say, hey, reach out, like tell people I need more clients, or you know, that again stems down to your relationships. Everything stems down to your relationships. It creates your where your reputation, where that is going to create the referral. Because we can sit here and have the best business cards, the best outfits, all that, but that doesn't mean shit, honestly. At the end of the day, unless your friends are not standing up for you, like those elephants, you know, those are the girls who are going to like say, you know, this is this is my girl. You need to do business with her. And your relationships with your friends and your community is everything, and those are the people you need to pour into besides pouring into yourself. I'll keep mine super simple because it's uh, our side right now, I don't think, it's one-third. Um, so there's, this is a very loaded answer question and a very loaded answer, I'm gonna keep it very simple. The first thing is to, here's the reality, is that you are meant to do something, which is your passion, and you'll know what it is because you'll do it the best with the least amount of effort and resistance. Let's say that again. Say it for the people that I will say it louder. You are meant to do a certain set passion and thing when you do it the best with the least amount of effort and resistance. Hmm. But here's the caveat. <laughs> is that success comes from within, not from without. And so if you are on a journey and it is not working for you, first of all, go internally and visualize exactly what you are seeking. Because what you are seeking is seeking you. That's just the law of the universe. Lastly, and I'll wrap this up. If you learn anything today, please learn this from me. Understand the power of pivoting. When you pivot, it does not make you a failure. When you pivot, 
it makes you a winner. That's right. Because <laughs> I've done this my entire career and I've made it. But don't be afraid to pivot. And that's really important. Mm. Yeah. Woo! Good job. resonate with bits and pieces of what all of you said, um, and I'll keep it brief as well. Uh, I think in terms of assessing when you should pivot versus sticking with it, one, I think being really grounded in your why and being really, really clear about that and your why is going to be much deeper and bigger than the what that you do or the how in the sense that the why should be so grounding that you could do anything. The way that I do hair and I do poetry, the why is centered in those things even though they're different. Um, and then within that assessing, where are you feeling that resistance? Is it because there's an aspect of it where you need to delegate and outsource? Or is it that you need to remove some things that allow you to invest more time and energy to actually see it through? Mm -hmm. um, so I think slowing down to see, have I done everything I truly can to make this work? or you know, do I need some help? Um, as opposed to just pivoting. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. So that means our time with the panel is coming to a close, but we're here. You can still approach, ask questions, engage with us. One final thing. What is one word that you'd like to leave with our audience today? One word. <laughs> Don't explain it, just say the word. your attention, your time, and your energy today. And we're going to turn it back over to continue with the program. So thank you, everyone. We appreciate you. Woo!